So, Dhruv and Neeraj, in the meantime, you can set the context uh, by sharing the agenda. People will join and continuously involved. Okay. So, I'm presenting my screen. Yeah. So I'm turning on my video as well. Fine. So in this fourth session, our agenda will be to cover uh, how to prepare domain domain specific data models. So uh, and then horizontal expandable in which columns will be dynamically extended as per the user input parameters. Then we will be presenting the, write the validation at the format mapping. Then we'll take question and answers. Awesome. So, Great. Yeah, I'm starting from here. Like, Okay. So the first topic is uh, our domain specific data model. So here, why I have mentioned domain specific, it means uh, let's say we are trying to prepare some invoice model. So this invoice model will be for all type of transaction related to invoices. Let's say we want to do the printouts, we can use it. If we want to do the integration for the GST integrations e invoicing, then also the same model can be used. And in future, if we want this uh, model to uh, generate the QR code for the dynamic QR code, that can also be used. So a single model can solve multi-purpose. So this is why I'm uh, using the word domain specific. Microsoft is also using the same word. So let's say we are trying to generate payments. So in that payments, we will be creating payment specific data. And we will reuse the data for different type of payment integrations. It will be like it is not specific for a single integration. It can solve multiple integrations for the vendor bank payments, customer receipts, all those things. So here I have taken one example. Like if we are trying to prepare domain specific data model, so how to plan that thing and how to prepare this. So we'll be showcasing in this system as well. So this is the structure like uh, let's say we want to utilize the addresses multiple times. For example, uh, I'm preparing an invoice sales invoice print and here we would require to print delivery address from address to address these type of addresses. So every time in an address we will be requiring the same things like state code, state name, city, street. This type of things we will be required. So every time we uh, need not to prepare the, uh, those nodes, we can prepare a single route where we can define all the nodes and then it will be reused. It can be reused multiple times. So yeah, it is called referencing of the model. Then uh, with the example. Much. If, if I may buzz in, uh, let's say uh, the example giving the example of the same, let's say that uh, the buyer address and the seller address, right? You can give the example like, of the same. Yeah. That, so, that we will be creating single and then we will be reusing for the both of it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Here, another example for the payment file. So it is similar to that one because we just need to understand what type of nodes we will be required. And then we can reuse it multiple times. So I'm going into the system now.
reporting configurations. So let's see this example. In the address node, it is added as a root. So in this address node, we are giving multiple addresses like address, address line one, line two, city, then state code, state ID, state name, this way. And using this address and then let's say bank information is there. It could be of customer, it could be of our company. So that bank info will be reused. And then let's say contact information. It can also be of our address and build to or ship to contact different address. Uh, different contact information could be there. So let's say contact name, email, mobile URL. We want to reuse multiple times. So uh, that way we are prepared single time. And uh, just giving this example, let's say we want to create company info. And in the company information, we will be having company information, company bank information, company contact information. So here we can see the same nodes are there. Contact name, email, fax, these way. So if we uh, if we add any other thing, let's say in the contact info, I'm adding one more field. So we have used this one. Coming back and opening the same page again. So yeah, in the contact information, we have added this telephone, but in that contact uh, company info, it can also be seen. Yeah, it is also added. So it means we can maintain the same using a single node as well. So how to reference these? So in this contact info, let's say this is one of the root. Here we want to add company info. We, below that, we should create a record. Record or record list based on the requirement. Let's say we want to repeat the same. It will be using the record list, else record. So contact info, I'm giving detail. Uh, this is the record. So under this record, we want to reference this contact info. So here, click switch item reference. And then click this one, contact info, and set OK. So there is a one common error which uh, uh, people face. Uh, so here, what happens whenever we try to give this reference, so it should not be given that way, let's say, under the con company info, and if we are giving the reference, it will, uh, let's say, whenever you are trying to open the model, it will not easily open. So you need to identify and delete that one. So it is uh, very carefully you need to do this. To avoid the loop, we should be able to understand uh, if we are under the company, we should not select the company info at least. So under this contact information we have selected. So once it is selected, we can see other fields are there. And in future, if we want to do any changes, we cannot directly change it from here. We need to go to that reference. Let's say we want to make any changes in the address. So click there, go to reference item. It will automatically take you to the where it is referenced. So here we can add, add additional lines. We can add address three. String. Not record. So as a address line three, we have added. If you want to see here. You can see address line three. So automatically, wherever it is referenced, it will be here. Uh, let's say under this invoice base, this is the main route which I am referencing. 
under this, let's say we are trying to create a printout. So their company info detail would be referenced. All the other details can be linked here. Then the delivery address here we have referenced this one address directly. And then company address contact information. So this way it has been prepared. So under this invoice we can see there's a line details also. So payment line is there. Then we are using this. Uh, let's say we want to create header and lines and reuse it multiple. So we can prepare the header ones and line ones. Let's say in the line we are preparing this. In dimension are there batch number, color ID, configuration ID. So we need to understand what are the things which are going to repeat again and again. So that can be prepared once and reuse. So let's say we have prepared this invoice line item. And then this is the header invoice base and using both the customer invoice. In this customer invoice, we are using the customer invoice base as the header and line as a lines. So both are referenced. Let's say we want to prepare another printout, uh, another record. So their transfer shipment invoice. We want to use it. So I'm adding one model. Transfer shipment invoice. Under this, we want to use the header and lines. So let's say headers. If you want to repeat that, it can be done. So record as header and then lines as a record list. Under the header, we are using the invoice base. This one. Under the line. We are using this invoice item, line item. So header. We can see all the details has been fetched. So what is the use of this new route? So whenever we are going to give this model mapping, so there we are, we can select that route, right? So for the invoice, we have prepared another, let's say customer invoice, customer invoice, customer invoice trans. And for the transfer shipment, the different set of data is there. So let's say invo uh, invent transfer jar, invent transfer line. So that can be used here. So it is very useful in these scenarios. So uh, this is all about the invoice model mapping. So uh, domain specific one. So here the example invoice model. It is a standard. In the standard we can see. So multiple nodes are there. Based on the complete requirement. So it can be designed over the time, but we need to understand the pattern at least. So let's say we are talking about the bank account. So in the bank account, these type of data are there. But under the bank, we want to give the address, address. So in the postal address, that address is utilized. So which address is utilized here? View item reference. One sec. Go to item reference. So here it is there. Postal address. Under the postal address, these things are there. So we can do any changes here. It will automatically add it there. So this way it work. Similar for the payment file is there, so we can learn from these files, the standard files.
So we can see and learn from here. So uh, from these many model routes, how to understand the thing? Let's say we are going to see the mapping. So here it is not there. Mapping is prepared separately. Let's say this is the here. And we can see the definition here. Customer credit transfer initiation. So this is the name of the route. We can go come back to this payment model. And yeah, here it is there. So from here we can understand. Whenever we want to do any changes, we need to go there. So let's say we want to add another field. So here, go to reference item. Here we can add. So this way we are, we can plan our complete data model and then reuse the same. So it is all about the domain specific data model. So our next, next topic is for the how to prepare horizontally expandable ranges. It is not that much clear. So I'm just opening the blog. Achieve. So let's say at the run time, we are, we are already aware about the financial dimensions and inventory dimensions. So these dimensions, it can differ from uh, client to client as per the requirement. So let's say in this example, I'm taking main account, business, center and department, these four dimensions. But let's say in a client, there could be different dimensions as well. So every time we need to create the different type of columns. But to overcome this situation, we can prepare the dynamically expandable ranges. Let's say at the runtime we are selecting business unit and call center. So system will automatically prepare only these two columns. Then our department will not be shown. So this way we can also prepare. So let's say let's go into the system and try to understand and also so this is a simple example I'm giving. A root needs to be prepared. And then two record list would be there. One record list is for the as requirement for the data. Let's say we want to prepare a ledger general report where all the posted general lines will be there. And also we want to see at the main account business unit cost center level. So how to prepare this? So coming into the system. Here we need to create, uh, prepare two records. One is for the main data. And another is for print. under this one. So what we are trying to achieve, let's say first understand into the Excel as well. That will be more useful.
we are trying to prepare this type of report journal batch number journal batch number i have already given the name batch transfer voucher or uh, let's say here transfer batch then transfer voucher number date currency code debit credit and then dimension so what is there uh, let's say we want to prepare based on the number of dimension selected so here i already only taken one cell so it will help us to prepare let's say main account business unit cost center the name of the dimension and then here dimension value will be used so it uh, all the data will be vertically expanding but these columns will be expanded horizontally the main part of the solution is in this cell so here we want to dynamically extend this dimension name this way horizontally and this dimension value also horizontally as well as vertically based on the different data so here we are talking about one record disk would be there to print these lines and another record disk under this record extend horizontally that way and one more record list for this so there are three record list we are using one record list to print the name another record list to vertically extend the data and also within that record list we want to extend horizontally so we'll showcase into the system now so here we have prepared one record list under this main data we want to print some fields say batch number this is general batch number so avoid the confusion general batch number taking the example from the excel only voucher then date and currency code debit and credit amount and here dimension values so these dimension value we will be preparing under this as a record list print here on to showcase the dimension code dimension name and under this dimension print also same thing names so this dimension print is reflecting this header one so in the header we will also only require the single field let's say for the name main account business unit cost center department so here only i prepared only one single name and under this dimension value i want to print code along with the name so preparing two fields so model is complete so we'll go to the mapping so we can see here there is one record list here and the another one 
below this record list, there's another record list. So we'll add this table record first. So in my example, ledger journal trans, we are taking the journal lines which we post from the general journal or vendor invoice journal. So this is a record list for us. And below this record list, I'm just grouping it for understanding. So there are the fields and here it is financial dimension. So the main part of the solution is this financial dimension. So here we are having the ledger dimension, default dimension, offset ledger and offset default. So taking this example only ledger dimensions. So in the ledger dimension, we can see main account and dimensions. It will be having the name of the dimension, report column name. Uh, there's an option on the dimension page to uh, showcase what is the report column name would be there. And then there's a code and description for the data. Let's say we are talking about the main account. It will showcase us the main account code and then the main and it will showcase only the name, main account, business unit cost center, only this thing, not the value. So let's bind the data here, record list with the main data. The dimension value record list will be binded from this record list. The dimension code, we want to print this one. Dimension name, we want to print this description. So this way it will be prepared. And other fields we should also bind. So we'll be binding from the fields. Eight. So these fields have been binded, but how to get the name? So name is under this field. This one definition name and record report column name. So I'm showcasing you what is the report column name also. Financial dimensions. So here there's an option of report column name. So that field can also be utilized. So dimension name could be different, but we want to print some different column name that can also be used. So for the simplicity, I'm taking this one because might not be data would be there for all the dimensions. So based on the data, we can also change. So to get this thing and how to get the at the runtime, the selection part. So for that, we are having this option. I'm just closing all these. In this function, there's a financial dimension details. Add root. So I'm giving this name financial dimensions. Ask for dimension is there. So we can tell the system like all the dimension we want the selection at the runtime that can also be done based on the legal entity. Let's say in this current legal entity, if it is there, we can give. Let's say, uh, there are total 100 dimensions you have prepared, but for the legal entity, only 10 are applicable. Then we can use this legal entity one. 
and if we want to use the dimension sets so that can also be used so dimension set we know uh, we can prepare different type of dimension set let's say main account plus cost center main account plus department plus cost center so that way so i'm taking this legal entity one ask for main account yeah it should also ask for main account we want and then okay so actually in a data model if we have added this group this one financial dimension detail or inventory dimension detail it will automatically understand that it is going to link with all the dimension that we are going to print let's say we do not need to give it individually we do not need to select anywhere whenever at the run time it will ask it will automatically understand it is for type of data so let's say uh, here i'm just using this one definition name main account record list and this name with this name perfect so i have not binded the, this data source so how it will understand so let's say we are just trying to run it at the run time it will ask the dimension name which dimension we want to use based on the legal entity in this legal entity only these three dimensions are in the account structure these are active so that is why it is showcasing only three we can select all we can select any one of them so based on this data system will understand that we need to print only the selected di dimensions so we'll showcase you how to use the same it was all about data model and mod mapping so based on this we want to prepare a format Okay, so here first we will import that file that we have prepared so we can see under this sheet there is a header so we had also added some headers in the file that's why it is becoming we, we are not going to change anything here so these headers are coming from the file like here we have given some page one of one date time so that's why it is already picking the things now coming here record list we are having so here the group by is used uh, but uh, yeah okay so the main part of the solution is here let's say dimension value it is showing as a cell only but it must be a record list to bind this dimension value so how to achieve this one so below this range 
below this range, I'm going to add one range. I'm giving it a name dimension value. In that Excel range, what needs to be given? So if we are not giving any proper Excel range, it will not understand. The Excel we can see, this is the name, dim values. I'm using the same name, dim values. Replication would be horizontal. So by default, it will be at the last. So we can move it. Then this cell must be under this range. So this cell needs to be selected, cut, select this range, and then paste. So the, the main part of the solution is this. Since we are only using a single cell, that's why we need to add this way. Else, if we have used uh, uh, two cells we have selected, then it will automatically come as range. But here, it was a single cell. That's why we have added the range and then the cell value. Similar thing needs to be done for the name, dimension name. So the name should also be extended. I believe it is going to be some complication, going into some complication, but believe after the practice, you will understand. So copy this one under this report. Adding our range again. Exactly expandable. This is the name. name to be cut then paste so name PM. now i'm just binding the things So dimension code and name both are there, so we can concatenate both the things and use so dimension code, then some pipeline symbol, and then selecting all dimensions. So this is the data prepared. So we can say the name is coming in business and dimension then. And the name is also coming. So here values were not there, so it is not showing. So based on that, it is expanding. And if at the runtime we select only two things, let's say two dimensions. and main account. 
then it will only showcase only two things, uh, two columns. Only we are having two columns. Actually, I've covered the thing. So based on that, this different example is also given in the another block. So you can also go through the inventory dimensions. So it would be helpful. We'll share the link of this blog as well. So here, inventory dimension would be there. Size, color, config, this way and columns will be expanded based on the requirement. Uh, Dhruv, you can take over from here, like valuations can be covered now. Yeah, thanks so much uh, Neeraj for covering those part. So guys, we have seen uh, two major things here, the domain based uh, data model followed by uh, our uh, financial dimensions, the horizontal data can be expanded towards Excel. And uh, the creative you are, the creative your solution would be. The main similar thing is to have uh, similar knowledge. You can expand anything, whatever the uh, business process you have, whatever the data you want. So you can just uh, do that with, with then one. I will be just sharing my screen just a moment. Hope my screen is visible uh, to all of you guys. So thanks so much again, Neeraj, to showcasing and uh, moving forward to validation, which is one of the uh, crucial part of the business. So uh, we'll see that uh, how we can apply the validations moving forward to any of the things, including it means anything. You can have uh, integrations, format, uh, any reports that you would like to build or that there is anything already been processed you would like to apply any validations so you can do that so in this screen you can see that uh, we have a screenshot of the standard ones which which is being used in underneath of gst invoice format which is the standard uh, format for uh, e invoicing so the similar way we are going to see that how we can create it and why it is being so uh, you know crucial part of the validation and why it is mandatory so moving forward to the system. I think my screen isn't visible. Uh, is my screen visible to everyone? I think. Uh, Neeraj, is it visible? Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay, yeah, fine. So uh, as this is already prepared and uh, showcased to you in the last uh, sessions, so this is one of the JSON format which has been prepared. And we'll see that how we can apply the validations. So basically validations you can apply in an every way apart from the data model. It can be applied in uh, model mapping and format. Uh, along with your solution. So we'll see that how we can apply in uh, the format designer. So as you can see that this is already prepared one JSON format, which is having some data. Let's say for your accounting date, item ID and uh, quantity. So based on these, we'll see that how we can uh, apply this format. One of the format uh, already been created for item and this. So we'll see the item conditions and uh, we'll try to create again from scratch. So I'll just delete it so that so once you starting to do the validation, one thing you need to see that on the right hand side, the menu. 
So there are four for the first, first is the format, second is mapping, which you can see the mapping and all. Then there is the transformation, which we already covered in last uh, session by uh, Neeraj only, and there is this validation. Once you select which point that you wanted to process with the validation, and then you will create new, it, it will automatically be picked the path. You can see the path has already been selected here. It's just because of that we have selected the path and uh, we confirm that okay by creating new that this is the uh, data that we need to put the validation. So now this validation point is selected as item ID as in the value which we have already given the name. The two part of it, one the condition, second the message and uh, sorry the second the uh, process validation action and third the message. Now the condition, the condition as in then this item ID, there can be one particular item ID that which you want, don't want to process with. So uh, I have already extracted one. So that is M0013, let's say among of these. So underneath of this condition, when we click here, we can see the data sources is being shown here. So what we're going to do the same similar way that we have selected the path for the validation the same way we are going to select the item which we wanted to place the validation for so now we have selected the data that what in this field that whatever the data will be populated we wanted to uh, place a single uh, item id which we don't want in our uh, report or let's say that uh, uh, if that is coming it will show us that uh, it, it was the part or throw the error or let's say the as per of the warning we can cover so far. So now as per the condition, what I put is uh, not equal to this is similar to not equal to if anyone here is in any technical, you know that not is sim this symbol in X plus plus and we just wrote down this one. Again, in the SQL side also we should we will be writing this and SSRS design also the similar way is being used as these scripts here not equal to and under the uh, double quotes, I'll be passing the item name, which is M0013. So I don't want this item to be uh, the part of this. So what I'll do basically, I'll just save it. And you can see the overview here that this is correct condition. Otherwise, it will come under the here. Or even you can test it from here. You will see that anything comes here, so it will let you know that it will it is correct or not working by that your condition. Once the condition is wrote down, you can see the condition is showing here. Similar way, the second part which I spoke of was the validation action. The validation action, there are three types here. First is stop execution and raise an error. So what it does basically if we select it and uh, uh, and we run it the format once it gets the the data as the condition is getting true it will just throw the error and it will stop the operation it won't go you know that and it will write down the info log with the error the condition uh, the message basically which we are going to write second is the continue execution and write the uh, write a remark so what it does basically it will continue to execute the operation which we have run and in the end it will wrote down how many times it will it, the condition will meets the uh, the validation it will let us know the right uh, the, the last oh, sorry the second was the remaining for that i'm so sorry for that uh, the warning for it so continue execution it will just uh, let us know the slightly warning that okay that it was uh, there the, the part of uh, data which we have executed the third one is the one which I just spoke of in the last one that it will continue execution but raise an array in the end and it will stop finally, right? So what we are going to do, we will be first of all select the second one to see that uh, it will the mark, uh, you know, just uh, gave us the warning, not stop the execution. So we'll click on the edit message and uh, with the purchase order, how are we going to recognize so with the data set underneath of this purchase order will select it and add to source. By adding the second value, we'll have to uh, use this percent followed by the, let's say like this. 
I'll start with ten percent and then. like this yeah so we'll save it and go back now it time to check so you can see once you come outside save it with the, the save button on alt s is the shortcut click on the run button it will show you the purchase order number and the this is for the batch of so i'll just click on ok As you can see, uh, the file has been downloaded, but it has given me the validation here that the order number, INMF, and the item ID is found. To cross check, I think I just shared my window, not entire screen. I'll just share the window, entire thing here. Hopefully my screen is going to be visible now and I'll show you the file. Which has been downloaded yet now. So this file was downloaded and if I click and open it. You'll see. That. We will see the purchase order number. was a number seven eight having the same item okay, this item id so similar way it has given us the warning now if we just change the execution to let's say stop execution and save it and run it now. What will it go? See, it has stopped the execution and gave us the error. The first it found it works as the same as exist method in the system. The exist method, what it does basically exist method, once it gets the value, the true, that whatever that thing's been wrote down, it will return a true or false. The similar way it, it works like that. So this is the uh, the first value and this that did uh, the same item ID has been found. So it thrown an error. The last if we check about the continue execution that raise an error. So as I mentioned that it, it will. Continue the execution, but in the end it will throw the error. Save it and run. So now as you can see that it has 44 errors and it has checked thoroughly everything and it has given us and in the end it's been stopped similar way the screenshot which has been attached and shown you initial of this you can use and as per your requirement i'll just make sure is it visible So this is the standard GST invoice format IA that this screenshot we are showcased. Once you go inside this format and you click on the validation, you'll see all the validations here. These are the standard ones. So you can see and you can learn from here and you can try to apply here. As you can see, the first one is for the date and the path has already been chosen here. Condition is there that not equal to null. So date cannot be blank. And it is the same as continue execution and stop in the end. The same, the all of it, uh, the post validation action has been chosen for that. And this is the message. And you can choose these standard uh, label files also and use this format. 
along with that you can also use concatenate if you having multiple or you can use just the ampersand and then followed by then i shown you it will work like that also this is uh, crucial uh, because uh, as per the business processes sometimes we want that uh, some sort of data won't be there in any any report uh, any any payments you don't want to be uh, covered in any any uh, report transaction report or any invoices such invoices or any integration you, you don't want to send some of it some uh, sort of it so you can apply directly in uh, model mapping also if i go to model mapping and show you that where you can apply from here the similar way going to design on the left hand side validation here you can select the data where you wanted to do it and the same is you can do it same execution same everything here so it will stop at the time of uh, fetching the values and at the time of binding uh, so it is the second state of data model in the model mapping and it will stop before going to format so that's where you can uh, stop uh, before then that also but if you want at the format side you can also use that so i think uh, we have covered much this one the conditions that i just shown you the condition can be uh, very differently if you want uh, you can just use the standard formats like this one one of the examples given here that you can first check that uh, the invoice id uh, cannot be having more than 16 characters you can check so whenever uh, there is anything any number sequence which is you know uh, uh, far beyond that says 16 words carrying it so it will first check and it will, it will throw the error depending upon what you have chosen and what message you are processing with yeah i think uh, i'm done with my part uh, uh, you can just start with the question answers as per today then we'll wrap up yeah or uh, no Thank you very much, guys, for your amazing presentation. So, my first question is for uh, Nirat. Nirat, for horizontal expandable, the column that should be expand horizontally should be the last column of your Excel format mapping, uh, your Excel format, right? So actually, in the example, I have taken the last column, but it can be also in this middle. But we need to understand like other ranges should, must not be ex, uh, overlapped that one. So whenever it will be expanding, it should expand it properly. Let's say the header and the lines data must be equal. Else the report will showcase a very different structure. If we so, need to to expand a column uh, place in the middle, we should leave a, enough space afterward in order to allow model to expand it properly, right? I didn't get the last one, so I just I mean, I mean if the column to be expandable is in the middle, that means yeah. we should leave afterward enough spaces to allow format to be expanded, right? No, no, no. That one. I'm, I'm just saying. Let's say uh, if we are going to use the ranges, that type of ranges, in sure that the horizontal data, let's say in the header and the lines, must. So let's say if there are four columns are expanding, so in the header and the line, must contain the four uh, record list, uh, record values. Mm -hmm. As what would happen, let's say in the header, we are passing only a record list which is having three characters, three values, and in the lines, we are passing four. Then what will happen? First, uh, header will be extended only three times, and the lines will be expanded four times, and all the data will be showcasing, let's say, uh, and the data will not reflect in the proper column. 
but if we are using the same at the um, column end, then this issue can easily identified. So the thing is we need to ensure that record list of header and line both must contain the same number of records. Then we can use it in anywhere in the middle of the columns as well or at the end. Thank you very much. My last question on the on your test scenario, you you show a main account code and main account description in the same column. Uh, is it possible to show main account code in one column and just column afterward the main account description? Uh, yes, it can be done. So in the example which I have taken, just assume this one. Okay. Hope it is visible. Yes, I can yeah. see what's going Yes, in the dimension value, I have only taken a single cell. So we can take two cells. Let's say for one for the code, another for the name, and also give a name to this complete range. That's clear. For then, Thank you. yeah, then we did, uh, do not require to print all both the code and description in a single cell, then we can use different cells. And this complete cell will be horizontally. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think we can uh, take the second question from Dili Raj. Uh, and Ankit, I think Ankit will. Yeah, Dili Raj. Hey, hi, good morning, guys. Um, sorry, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you are. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic presentation. Um, you guys are doing a really marvelous job. Um, so uh, from the, I have two questions from what Neeraj has presented and as well as uh, Dhruv has presented. Um, so you are applying conditions, validations. I I understand those concepts, but instead of that, will it be possible to? apply ranges and like, you know, in how we do query ranges in AOT queries, like similarly, can we apply query and apply a range hard code and then say skip this values and then export? Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. So basically, uh, when preparing the, uh, let's say the data sources of the, and that time also we can do it to avoid that we can uh, use a filter function. So it will, you know, that uh, avoid those sort of transactions. But somehow, let's say that uh, you are working on any of the integrations, and later on, uh, somebody has posted something, or you don't, or you want to avoid something, and you, you, there is sim similar to any particular data, like just like that I just shown you last thing, the data cannot be null, date cannot mm. be null. That mm. these are the formats which is being, validations. you know, that the, uh, at, yeah, validations which is basically being necessary to just to, you know, cross check just to the second level of. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, taking care of the rest part. Okay. Uh, we make sure that Got this it. is going to be work fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dhruv. Thank you. And uh, can I ask a question from what Neeraj presented? Uh, yes. Sure, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so go ahead. Neeraj uh, added the dimensions, right? Uh, so if you see um, uh, the dimension control itself uh, by standard it gives you the I mean if you open a ledger journal in open in Excel and if you have the dimension uh, what is a DAVS linked to a particular entity so whatever the dimensions it will create as a column in the entity by itself so there is a new concept which you link a DAVS to any entity it creates those uh, dimensions itself uh, in the Excel automatically. You don't need to uh, put the values in a display value like those days how we are doing it. So it will automatically bring those columns when you add DAVS uh, entity. So is it something can be achievable, right? Rather than selecting the uh, dimension, what like how you did? I'm just throwing up some ideas like to see because that would give you or dynamically the dimensions based on the existing activated dimensions? So actually the thing is we are uh, in the example I have taken the horizontally expandable. So my example was specific to that financial dimension. But yeah, the logic is, can be applied to other things as well. 
the thing which you are saying for the financial dimension, yeah, the alternative can be there. Must be we can use that entity as well. But the thing is, the concept which I am trying to explain you, it can be used other than this financial dimension or horizontal. Okay. One. Okay, got it. Yeah. So got it. So this and one concept more, can be used. Okay. One more thing yeah. on that, you have um, hard coded uh, the value just for the sake of uh, not displaying a vertical bar. If values are there, it will print. Is it a mandatory thing or is it can be null? Uh, which part you are saying? Uh, I'm just no, if in, your, in your Excel, what it is downloaded, if you see that, if the values are there, it was printing uh, vertical. If values are not there, that's why you said it uh, printing a vertical bar. I mean, it's nice to represent that, but I'm asking like, okay, instead of that, is okay. it a mandatory step or this is one. it a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually we can give a condition here. Let's say if business unit is blank, then we should not print this one. So that condition can be added. It is not a mandatory thing. So it's not a mandatory to, thing. Yeah, that's why no, I was asking. Not okay. yeah. Because in your condition, I saw you are actually entering, uh, you know, um, uh, what is it, ampersand and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we were just trying to add two fields there. So even we can give a condition here. Oh, uh, yeah. Any of this is blank. What what does this do actually? Dimension code or dimension name? What does it do? It prints either or this or that or what does that do? No, no. Actually, no, here right, we'll in this example, of both of it. We want to prevent print both. That's why I'm giving both the one. So the oh, question okay. Arnold has asked, like, if we want to print these in a two different column, then how to do it? So in that scenario, we have said, so we can even use two different columns, one for the code, another for Correct. Yeah, got you. Got it. Okay, yeah. fine. That makes really sense because I was a little bit confused. Sorry about my ignorance. So I was no, thinking like no, we no, need to fine, give fine. the uh, vertical bar as a mandatory thing so that then only the dimensions will get printed. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for the help. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, Ankit, please go on. Then we'll wrap up after this question. Ankit, okay. please. So uh, um, my question to Neeraj. So can we uh, create a report and run these Financial dimension without selection pattern. So I saw you were selecting the financial dimension, but uh, suppose we need a report. Uh, if some dimensions are available, that that can that should be print without selection. Can that be done? Yeah, so yeah, that can also be done. So here the question which I added here. Let's say ask for param ask for query parameter was there, right? Yes. So we can deselect the same. It will not okay. ask the thing and it will print all the dimension available. Okay. And if you do not want to horizontally expand dynamically, so the uh, the thing is we are presently what we are doing, dynamically expanding the columns. If we do not want to dynamically expand, then we can even directly bind the fields. So in that scenario, we will be using not this dimension. We will be using dimension available under the relation or the methods. So then we will be using other thing. Just giving you example, let's say. To print those dimension, we will be having the fixed columns, right? No, not fixed column. Suppose uh, somebody change account structure later on and we want oh, okay, whatever okay. is available. So that is the question. And In second question. Yeah. Next is. Uh, so I find there are some relations uh, we can see in data source, so can we use uh, relations so relations uh, for our uh, report. So yeah. I was trying yes. to create some report and can we use fields from relation? Suppose yeah, uh, so suppose this when table is linked to bank account here. So can we use a field from bank account and it will print that? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, it can be used. So the only yes. thing is in the first session, uh, I was trying to explain the one thing, yeah. one of the concept. Yeah. If we will be using direct relation, it will, uh, let's say, there are 1000 records in the ledger general trans, and if you mm -hmm. want to get the vendor name, so mm -hmm. what system will do, get the data from relation, for every record, it will try to fetch that record. So it means to get the data, it will run for 100,000 100, one times, 1,001 times. Mm -hmm. okay. So every record, it will try to fetch from here, then this and that field. then. So to avoid those things, we use those those joins. 
Okay, okay. So, so that system will not use. Yeah, that can be used, but okay. it is not recommended to use in those okay. type of scenario where multiple data would be there. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, I think we are done. Uh, we can wrap this up. Thanks so much, guys, for attending our sessions. We'll be continuing to showcase you uh, and we'll let you through the ER. Yeah, in the Thank next so session. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, yeah, say like in the next session, we will be covering most of the extension part. Let's say GST extension, fix asset role forward extension. These standard formats, we will be uh, providing the guidance how to extend. It is not about how we are going to extend every time, but we will be providing the guidance how to extend. So that would be something very much useful for all. So that yeah. way you can touch the base out of it and you will see that how we can do it and you can also try this thing. Yeah, thanks so much. I think uh, we are done. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much.